Joy in the city. Joy in your life. Joy in your family. And joy everywhere in Jesus' name. GCK Authority has announced the next level move. From the land of honor and integrity comes two in one GCK live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria, the Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Professionals, titled Recharge to Excel, December 27, 2022, at 0600 hours GMT, all broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms with Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Good evening, everybody. Are you happy today? As happy as I am. God bless you. Let's try to stop and pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We bless your name because you have been blessing us and you have been adding something, adding value to our lives. We pray, Lord, tonight you open up your mind to every one of us so we can have a good mind, the right mind, and have the right revelation coming from you. And you turn our lives around that will be better people as a result of fellowship together with one another and with you. Bless everyone today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Tonight we have a subject before us. And the subject we're dealing with is righteousness in the intellectual world. Righteousness in the intellectual world. There's a passage of scripture. It's actually found in Proverbs. And Proverbs has been referred to as a book of wisdom. Because as you go through from chapter 1 to the very end, it gives you principles. And these principles, they deal with ideas, thoughts, nuggets that give you real wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, Proverbs 14, verse 34, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. When you check up that verse from the Amplified Bible, here is the way it reads, uprightness and right standing with God. In brackets, moral and spiritual rectitude in every area and relation. These elevate a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Putting all that together, it means righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness exalts a community, even an intellectual community. And righteousness exalts a family. And righteousness, of course, exalts the individual person in the community. Both God and man will exalt, will lift up, will promote, will uplift the upright righteousness. And the attending exaltation begin with our day-to-day -day acts and actions. Listen to this. Somebody has said, you sow a thought and you reap an act. You sow an act and you reap a habit. You sow a habit and you reap a character. You sow a character and you reap a destiny. That means then you start from a little thing. Let me put it this way for you. If you pick up that word habit, H-A-B-I-T. I'm going to start from this far end with the, four, with the last two letters. What are those two letters? H. A little thing. H. Then I move on a little bit and I have, I join the B. I have what? Bit. 
and then I join the A there, I have A bit. When I put everything together, I have habit. Am I telling you something? That little drops of water make a mighty ocean. And the little eight, it doesn't matter. A little eight, it doesn't matter. A little eight, what have I done now? A little eight, what are you frowning at? A little eight, what have I done that nobody else has done? A little eight, as you join them and join them and join them together, you have a habit. And when you go on like that, from the thought, to the act, to the habit, to the character, you come to the destiny. And that's why it's very important tonight, as we look at this subject, righteousness in the intellectual world. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the principle of righteousness. The principle of righteousness. Number two, the power for righteousness. And then number three, progress through righteousness. Number one, the principle of righteousness. Actually, principle is a real thing. Just as there are principles that rule the physical world, so also there are principles that rule the human world. You don't have to be a science student to know that there's something we call the law of gravity. And there's something we call the center of gravity. And as you look at the physical world, there is a principle that operates. And whether you know it or not, that principle always operates. I had somebody saying, I'm breaking the law and I'm getting away with it. I say, no, sir. You don't break the law. You break yourself against the law. You never can break the law. The law is there. The principle is there. All you can do is to break yourself. Because you know, the law of gravity does not play favoritism. If you stand up there on top of the building, and say, look at me, I want to demonstrate something to you. The law of gravity will be waiting for you, for your demonstration. I'm going to jump down. And I'm going to break this thing they call the law of gravity. My friend, you'll break your head, not the law of gravity. The law of gravity is still going to keep on operating whether you like it or not. That's principle. And as we have the principle in the physical world, we have principle in the human world as well. Principle is the foundation is the pivot, is the bedrock, it is the pillar, it is a cornerstone on which our lives are built. That's why it's very important for you to understand the principle of righteousness. Your future actually depends on the center. We call it the fulcrum. We call it the principle around which your life revolves. And when you look at your life, let me help you. You look at your life, there is always a pivot, there is a fulcrum. There is a, a central point where everything revolves around that. For some people, your life revolves around stuff, just material things. And I say, you are stuff-centered, S-T-U-F-F. Other people, the fulcrum of their lives is pleasure, and they are pleasure-centered. Center, Other people, their lives revolve enemies, and they are enemy-centered. Whatever they think, whatever they plan, wherever they go, wherever they refuse to go, it is centered on my enemy. I can't do that. My enemies will not allow me. I can't go out. My enemies will not allow me. I'm going to sleep tonight, and I'm sure I'm not going to have a good night's rest, because my enemies, I'll tell you in the morning, they'll come in the night. His life revolves around enemies. It's enemy-centered. Other people are friend-centered. They can't 
if they are going to the class and a friend came in and said, how are you? Let's have a nice day today. I wanted to go to the class, but since you have come, and for you, you are for me. They go out. Their lives friend-centered. Other people self-centered. What do I gain there? What do I get there? What do you give me? What will I benefit? What is my profit there? If I'm going to do anything for anybody, what's my gain? Why am I doing it for? I'm not going to get anything. Self-centered. Other people hero-centered. They just look at that man. Whatever he does, that's their hero. And their lives revolve around that hero. Other people, you are hobby, sport, centered. And no matter what you are doing, if you are dead tired and the doctor told you you needed rest, and if you don't rest, you are going to kill yourself, and then you hear, hey, 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 and they are shouting, you say, what is that? Say, Didn't you know that the game is on? I don't care if I die, I must watch that thing. You are sport centered, hobby centered. Now, when you look at your life then, and you begin to find out what's the very pivot of your life, the center of your life, around which your life revolves. I come here to tell you tonight that there is something you need. You need to become principle-centered. Have a principle. And know that this is why you live. It is that principle, my daughter, my son, that gives you the purpose for living, the mission in life, and the goal in life, and the destiny. You are going somewhere. You know there is a principle, and your life revolves around that principle. In Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, Reading from verse 14. Stand therefore. That looks like somebody that has stamina. Stand. That looks like somebody that has energy. Something within. Stand. Stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth. Get ready for action. And get ready for motion. And know that you are created so that you will be able to achieve something in life. Therefore, put on your belt and buckle up. And then it says, having on the breastplate of righteousness. That means that's a principle. And the principle is the principle of righteousness. In Proverbs chapter 12, Proverbs chapter 12, reading from verse 28, Proverbs 12, verse 28 in the way of righteousness is life. That's why we make it a principle. In the way of righteousness is life. And in the past thereof, there is no death. That's telling you something then. When you are not self-centered, you are not pleasure-centered, you are not enemy-centered, Neither are you friend-centered or self-centered. Neither are you a hero worshiper. You are not hero-centered. And you are not hobby or sport-centered. But you are principle-centered. There is a principle that guides your life. That supports your life. That sustains your life. That builds up your life. Then it says that principle will give you life. In the past thereof, there is no death. It tells us in Job chapter 27. Job chapter 27 verse 6. My righteousness I hold fast. I'm sure you've heard of, this, of Job before. The story of Job. Job said, you know what? Before that thing happened to me. I had a principle, and it was a principle of righteousness. And then something happened, and it wasn't quite very good. But my life does not revolve around events, around accidents, around whatever might have, have happened. My life revolves around a principle, and it is the principle of righteousness. That's why it says, my righteousness I hold fast. And will not let it go. This is my life. This is the principle on which I build my life. 
And then it says, my heart shall not reproach me as long as I live. I'm standing by this principle, and this is what I always stand upon. And I know that my heart will not reproach me. Now, here you are, and we're talking about righteousness. And some of you are wondering, what is righteousness? You know what righteousness is? It's R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S-N-E-S-S. -E Did you get that? What is righteousness? Righteousness is our rectitude. That's righteousness. Rectitude. And you want to have a principle in your life, a principle of rectitude, straightforward behavior without shady deals. Whether it is study time or examination time, whether I am a student or I am a lecturer, righteousness, if your life is built on principle, the principle of righteousness is the principle of rectitude, straightforward behavior. I, it is the principle of integrity. You keep your integrity. What do we call righteousness? It's another word for integrity. Holding, upholding honor with nothing to be ashamed of. That if everything I did was the lecturer, Everything I said to the lecturer, or if I'm a lecturer, everything the lecturer says to the student, if we were to record everything, videotape everything, and bring it before the whole university campus audience, I have nothing to be ashamed of. That's integrity. If you were to follow the student everywhere, follow the lecturer everywhere, and you follow him to every place he went, and then he says, this is how I live my life every day because I live on the principle of righteousness, integrity. Then you can show, you can show everything I've done to everybody. There is nothing to be ashamed of. That's a good, good principle. What's the righteousness? R for rectitude. I for integrity. G for the golden rule. The golden rule. You know, integrity matches with the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Do unto others as I want them to do unto you. And for those of you who are watching uh, through the screen, over here we just had a short play. And in the short play, the students uh, demonstrated quite a lot of what they are facing on our campus here. I don't know whether they are facing that same thing on your campus over there. And uh, one of the things uh, they highlighted is the sale of handouts. Now, the golden rule, lecturer. If I'm to do to others as I want them to do unto me, some of these students can barely pay their school fees. Some of them, the parents will say, now nah, I've done my best for you. Go and see how you're going to maintain yourself. And some of them work on the side to be able to maintain themselves. And uh, for this lecture, I have to buy the handout, say, 2,000 Naira. And from that other lecture, I need to buy the handout for 2,000 Naira. And I have to collect all that. And the lecturer tells me directly in the class, not privately. He says, uh, now listen to me. Students, A belongs to God. And because we are not God, who is going to get what belongs to God. That means count yourself out. And uh, B belongs to my family. And C, D, E, F, whatever, you pick the one you want. Even the C we are talking about, behave. Be cooperate with me before you can have that C. Think about that. The golden rule. Suppose you were the student and you did your very best. And then the lecturer told you that A belongs to God and B belongs to my family and C belongs to those who will cooperate with me, pay enough money, sell your body, do whatever, whatever I tell you to do. Then you'll be able to have a C and the rest of you can pick the D or E, whichever one you want. The golden rule, that is the G of righteousness. If we will stand on the principle of righteousness, the golden rule in our lives, we do to others as we want them to do unto us. And students, listen, you will soon become adults. 
or you become adults, you'll be in good positions by the grace of God. We're praying for you. And you will make it. Now, when that time comes, if you are done the right thing, and some groups of young people conspire together, and they decided they were going to burn your car, they were going to harm you, hurt you, beat you up because you did the right thing. How will that be? You say, that is not right. That's what some of us students are doing to lecturers. We beat them up because they will not cooperate with us. And because they will, they're trying to prove that they, are, they know better than we students. Ah, little ants can eat up an elephant. Therefore, will do something to you. Ah, turn the table around. Suppose you were. How would you want the younger people to act to you? Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. That is the golden rule of righteousness. What's the letter that follows? H, that's honesty. Honesty. You are honest with yourself. You are honest with others. In short, you are transparent. And then T, truthfulness. Even when others seem to get by, by lying and cheating, by selling their body, by doing evil, by teaming together, and then there is a captain over the team that is collecting the money, and he's going to get his commission too, and he's the one that represents us between the student body and the lecturer. And when the lecturer sees him, he says, um, you brought it, and he smiles, and he says, yes. How many of those uh, students uh, actually contributed? Well, just about eight. Eight? Out of uh, how many? Ah, all right. Give me the names of those eight people and give me their numbers. Ah, truthfulness. That in everything we do, there is a principle of truthfulness so that whatever other people do, we stand on that righteousness, the principle of righteousness, E for excellence, moral excellence, that distinguishes you from the chameleons, the amphibians, and the bats. The chameleons, they change color with their surrounding. The amphibian, you cannot say is on land or is on the sea. Whichever condition operates, amphibian, I am available. Ah, you know there are people like that. They do not have any backbone. They cannot stand. There is no principle. Blow, let the wind blow this way, they are there. When they are here, they are Christians. When they are over there, they are another thing. Amphibians and the bats. The bats, you look at the bat and it looks like it's an animal, like a mouse will be walking on four. And then when the night comes, it's flying. Where do you stand? You want to have moral excellence to distinguish yourself from chameleons and amphibians and bats. And then O oh, for obedience. Obedience to the rules of the game of life. When you play game, there are rules in playing the games. And if you're going to take part in the game, you have to observe the rules. And it is that observation of the rule, that obedience, that is called righteousness and the game of life. Life is a game. We relate with one another. We talk to one another. We interact with one another. And in that game of life, you cannot be in isolation. And as you relate with other people, interact with other people, obedience is the attitude we have, the response we have to the rules of the game of life. And then you for uprightness, you are uncompromising. You are standing straight, even under threats. When other people threaten you. And they say, ah, if you keep on standing like that, if you keep on acting on righteousness, you're going to suffer for it. You still keep upright. S for sincerity. Not, you're not in the habit of pretending, in the habit of covering up. N, no evil. Everybody say no. no. That's righteousness. Your friend comes and he tells you to do something wrong. You say, no, that's righteousness. 
We don't need to go to Webster's Dictionary to look for the meaning of righteousness. We don't need to go and look at the etymology and the root uh, word and break it down to all these syllables before you know about righteousness. Simply say no. They say you come, should come and sell your body for money. No, that's righteousness. They say you should go to the cyber cafe and you know browse things that are evil that will pollute your mind. You say no, that's righteousness. And they say you should practice 419. You say no. They say you should join this that you know is wrong, it's destructive. You say no, that's righteousness. No evil. That means to say no to evil and you act right. It means you are saying no to admission fraud. Sometimes it's mommy, sometimes it's daddy that will say, you've been taking this jam exam for so long. And if it continues like this, you're already getting to 23, 24, 25. Uh, we must do something. And you don't know what mommy means by doing something. And so he says, I've seen this, I've seen this, I've seen that. And where is your center? You say, here is my center. Ah, your mommy says, your daddy says, there's a special center. You will go to that special center. Mommy, what do they do in that special center? Obey first and then complain. <laughs> Mommy, I'm just interested. So when I get there, I know what I'm going to do. Well, in that center, what they do is, it's a special center. And in that special center, when those students, uh, you know, when they sit down, because we parents, we've uh, wet the ground. So, because we have done that, they will dictate everything. Whatever they dictate, right. Uh -uh. No to evil. Everybody say no. no. So, it means you are saying no to forged faith certificates too. That's what it means. That's righteousness. And you are saying no to exam malpractice. And you know that since uh, the advent of GSM and all these other things, calculators and all that, you know, some students are not clever that they even use the GSM and all the other things like that to do exam malpractice. And, uh, you know, they, they will show you something and they will say, hi about this. You say, I, I thought we would just use that to phone. Ah, sit down there. You don't understand. And then let me teach you. No, don't teach me. Because if I don't know about it, then I will not practice it. Don't teach me evil. When they want to teach you evil, how to use this and use this and use that, you say no. And you say no to great racketeering and corruption in all forms. That's righteousness and e exemplary behavior. Be an example. Be a model. Let people know this is who you are and is self-control. That's controlling your feelings, controlling your emotion, controlling your behavior. You put everything under control. Why? For the preservation of dignity, God's glory, and the common good, the good of others. And the last is self-denial. Doing without whatever you know will hurt other people so that you'll be able to help them. It is when we live by the principle of righteousness like this, that we are destined for greatness and for exaltation. I come to point number two, the power for righteousness. The power for righteousness. When I was very, very young, I don't know whether this happened to you, Sometimes my mother will want to pour some rice into a bag. Or sometimes it's Gary that he wants to pour into the bag. Or sometimes beans. And then he'll, he'll call me and say, come, help me hold this uh, bag. I was, I was thinking in my mind, very, very young. Later I understood. But every time you, that bag was empty, you need to hold it to make it stand. My mother never told me why, but I figured it out myself later. You know what I found out? An empty bag cannot stand upright. Something has to be inside that bag to stand upright. And I learned a great lesson. An empty bag, it may be small, it may be big. That bag may be in the village or may be on the university campus. Once it is empty, no matter the location and the position of that bag, if it is 
empty. It cannot stand upright. It may be pretty or colorful. Or it may be in a lowly place or in a high place. As long as that bag is empty, it cannot stand upright. We need to fill it up before it can stand upright. And I used to watch. My mother would be pouring that thing in and pouring that thing. And then the bag would be filled up. And then my mother would say, leave it. And then I leave it. Then he would tie it. And he said, well, just stand like that. And it amazed me when I was very young. But later I then understood. I looked at that bag. I said, ah, I will not be able to stand if I am empty on the inside. That something needs to enter into me and be filled with something before I can stand upright. And I pass that message I learned from my mother. I pass that to you today. That you cannot stand upright no matter how sharp you are, how beautiful you are, how handsome you are. No matter what course you are reading at the university. If you are empty, you cannot stand upright. The power for righteousness. You need an inner power, impetus, energy enthusiasm, something real within you that you will know I have something on the inside and then you will be able to stand and then what are those things you need to have inside before you stand? I'll tell you later but look at Ephesians chapter 6 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 Finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. In Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth to the Jew first. And also to the Greek. It talks about power there, and then it tells us it's the power of the gospel. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. Isaiah 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. That's talking about God. That means I can come to God. And when I come to God, he'll give me power. I want to understand. Uh, many times I like to put some handle into this is so you can handle it very well and understand what we're talking about. This power to stand, the power for righteousness, how does it come? One, conviction. Two, conscience. Three, commitment. Four, covenant. Five, consistency continuity and constancy number one conviction you know if you don't have any conviction you'll be blown away in this community in which you are actually conviction is like a magnet towards strength and ability to make right choices that's righteousness when you have the ability to make right choices all the time, all the time, you have the ability and the strength to say no to evil and yes to good. The conviction that you have that is well built within you is like a magnet that attracts you to strength and ability to make right choices. Conscience. Conscience. What's conscience? Conscience is that monitor within us that follows us about. Conscience is that policeman, if you please, that follows us about. Conscience is that judge that is within you, that is either approving what you've done or disapproving what you have done. Now, when you have an awakened conscience, an enlightened conscience, a sensitive conscience, that conscience will be a friend, always smiling at you. You did that well. It was very good you were quiet at that time. It was very good that when that lecturer was telling you what he was telling you, thinking that you are just another lady like all the other ladies, the way you comported yourself and the way 
no disrespect, no abuse, no insult. The way you responded and acted, you really, you have a past mark already. Your conscience makes you happy. And it says, I am your friend. I love, I appreciate the way you answer that individual. And in the exam hall, when somebody was by your side and was saying, Ks, Ks. and then you kept on writing, and then it did. And you didn't say, What is that or whatever? And he said, uh, Christian, in the name of God. <laughs> and you kept on doing what you were doing. And you didn't respond. You didn't look anyway. You are just doing your writing. And he just said, what's happening there? And you kept on doing what you were doing. And it was the other fellow that they had a problem with. Then you came out and your conscience said, wasn't that good? I love the way you behaved. And the way you acted. That was good. Your conscience is your friend. When you are doing well. When you are acting right. That conscience is your judge, your monitor when you do wrong and the conscience is the recorder that records it down ah you blew it up at that time you missed it at that point ah that way you behaved i expected more from you shouldn't have done that now make your conscience your friend make your conscience your reminder that will remind you that you are a man of purpose a lady of purpose and your principle by which you are standing. And then you make that conscience a counselor. When something is happening, you have the counselor there already. That's your conscience. And then he is the monitor and is your mentor. It's your partner in life. And when you have number one, conviction. Number two, you have conscience. Number three, you have commitment. What do I mean by this? You have a mission statement for your life. Mission statement simply means I envision what I am going to be in the future. And I keep that vision, that dream, that picture, that painting before me all the time. Some people even write it out. Some people will say, I am not going to have anything less than 4.5, my aggregate. And so they paste it there. And they have that all the time. Other people say, I'm aiming for five, and I'm not going to have anything less. Other people might laugh, other people might make fun, other people might jest. That's, you have a mission statement. Or you say, when I come out of school, they're wrong. I find society. I am going to make things right. I'm going to be salt on the earth and light to the world. Or I'm going to turn the lives of people around. I'm going to be... A, an inventor. I'm going to be a person that discovers this, that discovers that you have a mission purpose. I'm just going to care for people. I'm going to love people. There are people that are battered and people that are sorrowful and people that are suffering. I'm going to help people in a very definite, tangible, measurable way. That's mission statement. When you have a mission statement like that for your life and you are committed to that mission. And then somebody comes and he wants to derail you, distract your attention and say, I'm sorry. That's different from my purpose of life, purpose for living, my mission in life. And you are committed to that mission, always having your life's purpose in view. That will be a powerful way to help you turn your dreams into reality. Number four is covenant. This means covenant with God. You come into a covenant with God, into an agreement with God, you come into partnership with God, relationship with God. And this will help you to have God on your side. Whenever you have any lack, whenever you have any problem, you can always rely upon him because you have him on your side. And now, consistency, continuity, and constancy. You know what the experts of behavioral modification have found out? These experts that study the behavior of men, they found out something. That it takes a few weeks of repetition of the same action to create a habit. It takes a few weeks of repeating the same good act. 
repeating it over and over for a few weeks, doing that same thing before it becomes a habit for you. And then they said, it will take a bit longer for that habit to evolve into a principle that becomes a pillar of inner strength. That means then, you know that here is what to do. I've started doing it. Those of you have come to the Lord during this week and said, I give my life to the Lord. And I'm going to have now a new lifestyle. That's great. But it's not just for that one day or for one week. It's going to take some consistency, constancy, continuity before it forms into a habit. And then that habit, as you continue, will then determine your character. And the character will determine your destiny. Power for righteousness. I come to point number three. Progress through righteousness. Progress through righteousness. In Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him. Are you there tonight? If you are deciding for, the right, for righteousness, the Lord says, I shall tell you, it will be well with you. Amen. Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Good things will happen to you. Amen. There's something great coming your way as you decide for righteousness. But let me tell you this. Righteousness is not an isolated act of uprightness. An isolated act. Righteousness, the way we see it here, the way we understand it, and the way we know it works in life, is not a one-sided behavior that happens to be right at this time. I, I traveled out. As I traveled out, I, normally I have a wristwatch. And then as I uh, looked at the wristwatch before just getting to the house, it was about a minute to six. And then as I got in, we had the wall clock. I looked up like this, and it was a minute to six. And then I forgot all about it. I, you know, went to do other things. And I came back around nine o'clock. I looked up. It was still a minute to six. I thought it was correct, but it was dead. The battery was gone. But because it happened to be correct at the time I looked up, I thought it was a good thing. Dead clocks are right twice a day. Six o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the evening. And you think it's all right. And there are some people like that, they are right once in a while. And you look at them, you say, this fellow is righteous. Uh-uh. Wait until another hour. Then you will understand. You know, I heard about the story of a particular man. What happened to him is this. He went to buy a carton of fish at the grocery store. And as he got there, he paid the money. And then the, the, the people there took a carton and put it at the boot, in the boot of his car. And then he drove off. When he got to the house, he put the carton down and he opened it low and behold, it was not a carton of fish, but a carton of currency notes. He said, what? So immediately he drove back to that place and said, there is a mistake here. Because all the money they were receiving for that day in their sales, they were putting in that carton. The carton of fish, they also put it down to put in his boot. And then they called uh, one of the people there walking there, take this carton and put it in his boot. Instead of taking the carton of fish, he took the carton of currency. And then they put in his boot. And then he came back and he said, you made a mistake. Look at this, carton of currency. They said, what? There are still righteous people like this on earth? And you brought everything back intact? They said, please wait. Let us call the media people and the photographers to take your photograph. This is news. He said, no, I don't want media. I don't want photograph. The woman in my car is not my wife. If they come to take photograph, they will see. Although I am all right, 
on money. I'm not all right on this other side. Righteousness is not a one-sided thing. That somebody might look all right on this area, righteous on this area, this other area is rotten. That's not righteousness, but all round righteousness. And the Lord will do it for us. How do you have this righteousness? I'm inviting you now to join me. That we, together, will climb the ladder of success together. With someone that is called the righteous. Who is this? R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S-N-E-S-S. -S. Am I right? Is the Redeemer. That's Jesus Christ. Is the intercessor. Once you join with him, the righteous one, he redeems you as your redeemer. He begins to pray for you. Every need you have as your intercessor. And his G is your guide throughout life. He will guide you. You want to take a wrong step, he'll say, no, no. That's not God's purpose for you. That's not God's destiny for you. It's your guide throughout life. H is your high priest. Is the one that is going before the Father all the time on your behalf. And T is the truth and the way, the truth and the life. Anyone that comes to the Father will come through me. And E is Emmanuel, God with us. The power of God with us. And the goodness of God with us. Everything God can do, Christ can do. And it says he is Emmanuel, God with us. O is the only begotten son of God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life you is the unlimited companion and captain of our salvation when you hook up with him and you link up with him this righteous one is the one that lives with you and he gives you the power for righteousness. And he has unlimited power. He's an unlimited companion and captain. And as he is savior. And because he's savior, he saves you from sin. He saves you from attack. He saves you from evil. He saves you from anything that may want to destroy your life. Anything that wants to stop you in the way. He is savior. And is a Nazarene. Of the name that is above every name. And the name that carries authority here on earth and in heaven. And then he is the everlasting father. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The Prince of Peace. The everlasting father. And he wants you to come. So that you can join hands together. And he will help you through life. And then S is a son of righteousness with healing in his wings and when you come to him he beams his light glory light into your life and then the S there is the shepherd the shepherd and bishop of your soul and he will guide you through life the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And then he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Tell me, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head and my cup runneth over. When you join with this Redeemer, with this intercessor, with this righteous one, with the shepherd of your soul, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Stand up and join me. Stand up and join me. You need the Savior. You need this Redeemer. You need this righteous one. When he comes to you, he brings righteousness into your life. This is your chance for you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and for him to give you, number one, the principle of righteousness. Number two, the power for righteousness. And then number three, 
progress and promotion through righteousness. Tell the Lord, I want this Jesus. I want this Jesus. He's a righteous one. I want him in my life. I want him as my unlimited, unfailing companion, captain of my salvation. You need him. You need him. You need him. He will help you through life. You cannot go all the way by yourself alone. This Jesus, the righteous one. Amen. It's about an eyes closed. It's a very solemn moment. I'm happy that you are here tonight. I'm happy you've heard what you've heard. I'm happy that you're an intelligent person. I'm happy that you are so wise you cannot reject something good coming your way. The Lord Jesus wants to be your companion because he is the one that can give you this all around righteousness as a gift. And then he'll be a blessing to your life. As we close our eyes and heads about, I'm asking for those people you want to give your life to Jesus. You want him to be your unfailing companion. You want him to be your companion that will never fail, that will never leave you, will never forsake you, and he will guide you through life. Where are you? Raise up your hand. I'm waiting for you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. You are outside. You are inside. God bless you. Thank you very much. Those who are raising up their hands, can you come out here? I need to pray with you. You want to make Jesus Christ the righteous one the companion of your life. Keep on coming. God bless you. And all over in all the places you are watching, all the places you are listening, this is a solemn moment. Why don't you come now? And let our leaders over there take over and invite uh, our young people to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep on coming. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You are outside. You are inside. You can come. God bless you. I'm waiting for you. Where are you? Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. He'll make you righteous. He'll turn your life around. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. It's the wisest decision you can take in your life. The wisest decision you can take in your life. Keep on coming. You're outside, you can come. You're inside, you can come. Ladies, you can come too. Give your life to Jesus and let him impart this righteousness into your life. Amen. Let's close our eyes as we pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these who have come. I pray, Lord, you'll be their never-failing companion. And you'll be their never-failing captain of salvation. I pray, Lord, you forgive their sins and you grant them life eternal in Jesus' name. Bless them, Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Now the rest of us, uh, you've known the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. We're going to strengthen our relationship with the Lord. So I'm asking you everywhere, wherever you are now, just raise up your hand. We're strengthening our relationship with the Lord. Is the one is the author of righteousness. The Lord, our righteousness. Outside and inside, you want him to grant you this principle. To establish this principle in your life. The principle of righteousness. Anywhere you are, with whosoever, in whatever condition, in whatever situation that you want, this righteousness will be a principle and your life to revolve around this principle. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's so wonderful the things we've shared together. The principle of righteousness. The power for righteousness and progress for righteousness. Lord, I pray that all these who are here re-establishing their relationship with you, affirming their relationship with you, strengthening their relationship with you. I'm asking, oh Lord, that you plant the principle of righteousness in every one of their lives in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with them. 
you'll never fail them. And whatever problems there are in any of their lives, remove those problems in Jesus' name. For those who are sick, I pray that you touch them right now. And you heal them by your mighty power in Jesus' name. I'm also praying that, Lord, you touch their mind. You touch their brain. That as they read and prepare for the exams, they will do well in Jesus' name. Be with every one of these young people. And let this moment be that moment of time when you establish your righteousness in them. That they will be able to influence other people around them for righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, God bless you.